Welcome to, well, your deep dive on Ireland. It sounds like you're ready to, you know, trade the ordinary for uh, some Irish magic, right? Exploring like ancient castles, maybe a glimpse of the wild Atlantic way, and who knows, maybe even uh, weathering one of those classic Irish storms. We can't forget about experiencing the heart of Ireland, right? The food, the music, those welcoming people, and well, of course, the crick. Okay, so we've got a treasure chest of like fun facts and intriguing tidbits all about Ireland uh, from Love Ireland, their latest newsletter, ready to uncover some hidden gems with us. Let's dive right in. All right, so first up, you know those incredible landscapes from Game of Thrones, right? The ones that took your breath away. Yeah, well, it turns out Ireland was like a major filming location. And we're not just talking about one kind of scenery. Hey. Think dramatic cliffs, you know, those serene beaches, mystical forests, uh, even ancient fortresses that look like they're straight out of another time. Mm -hmm. It's really no wonder Ireland's become such a popular place to travel. It's like stepping right into a storybook. Totally. It's like those uh, visuals just opened up like a window into Ireland for a lot of people. But let's talk about really showcasing authentic Irish culture, right? This newsletter highlights Irish Roots, an online store founded by two brothers from Derry. They're all about preserving their heritage, you know. And what's really cool is their uh, dedication to authenticity. It goes way beyond just selling Irish-made goods. They work directly with uh, craftspeople who are keeping those traditional techniques alive. Like, take the Aaron Jumper, for example. Okay, now I'm picturing those cozy wool sweaters with the uh, those beautiful Celtic knot designs, right? Exactly. But, and here's the thing, each one of those intricate stitches tells a story. These jumpers, they come from the Aran Islands originally, and the patterns were more than just decoration. They were unique to each clan, and get this, they even helped identify fishermen who were lost at sea. Wow, that's, that's incredible. It's just amazing how, like, a simple piece of clothing can be packed with so much history and meaning, you know? It really does speak to the depth of Irish culture. And uh, speaking of incredible journeys... Let's talk about the Wild Atlantic Way. Have you heard about this? Oh, yeah. I mean, the name alone just screams adventure, doesn't it? Imagine this. Okay. You're driving along Ireland's western coastline, all those rugged cliffs, hidden beaches, charming towns, over 2,500 kilometers of it. But there's one stretch that's really special, the Dingle Peninsula. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting. Tell me more. Picture this. Hmm. Winding roads that just hug the coastline. And at every turn, there's another breathtaking view. You might spot these ancient stone forts perched on the cliffs or even catch a glimpse of Fungi. Fungi. Yeah, Fungi, the dingle dolphin. He's like a local legend. It's one of those places where time just seems to slow down and you can actually like truly connect with the raw beauty of Ireland. Okay, I am adding that to my like my bucket list right now. But wow, 2,500 kilometers, that's a serious road trip. You'd need a whole separate deep dive just to plan that one. You're not wrong. And speaking of planning, Let's talk about Temple Bar in Dublin. You know, the newsletter, it poses this interesting question. Is it a tourist trap or a must visit? Oh, that's a tough one. So what's the verdict? It's kind of both, to be honest. Yeah. Locals might tell you it's a bit of a caricature, you know, with those brightly painted pubs and tons of tourists. And yeah, it can be a bit pricey, but... There's always a but. But it's also the heart of Dublin's nightlife, right? You've got that traditional music spilling out onto the cobblestone streets. It's a place to enjoy a pint of Guinness, hear stories told uh, in those thick brogues, maybe even catch a glimpse of like some impromptu Irish dancing. You never know. So it's one of those places you just have to experience for yourself, right? You might love it, you might not, but you're not going to forget it, that's for sure. Speaking of unforgettable experiences, this newsletter mentions something about a storm. Yes. Looks like Storm Ashley is going to hit Ireland this weekend. The newsletter is warning about heavy rain and some seriously strong winds, so maybe not the best time for that clifftop picnic. Oh, no. A stormy Irish weekend. Although I have to admit, there's something kind of, you know, atmospheric about that. Maybe it's all those dramatic novels set in Ireland like Wuthering Heights, but with fewer brooding heroes and more uh, pints of Guinness. Right. Speaking of atmosphere, before we get to those cozy pubs, let's talk hidden treasures, yeah? The newsletter highlights County Offaly, a region that's often overlooked by tourists, I hear. Okay, spill the tea. What makes it so special? Well, for one thing, there's Clonmac noise. It's an ancient monastic site. We're talking 6th century here. But it's more than just a bunch of old stones, you know. What do you mean? Well, back in the day, Clonmac noise was a major center of religion and learning. Scholars would travel from all over Europe just to study there. 
the sites fill with these intricate carvings and high crosses, all telling the story of Ireland's spiritual past. It's one of those places where you can practically feel history, you know. Wow, that's I'm getting chills just thinking about it. And then, if you're more into the great outdoors, there are the Sleeve Blue Mountains. Breathtaking views, peaceful trails, a sense of tranquility you won't find in the city, that's for sure. Okay, so County Offaly is officially on the list. But mm. before we pack our bags, let's talk about some Irish culture. This newsletter mentions the song, It's a Long Way to Tipperary. Ah, uh, classic. It was written in 1912, and it became incredibly popular during World War I. Apparently, it really resonated with the soldiers who were, you know, longing for home. Just imagine you're far from everything you know, dealing with unimaginable hardship. And then you hear this song that's all about like green fields and the warmth of home, powerful stuff. It's really amazing how music can do that, you know, transport you back to a time and place, evoke all those powerful emotions. Speaking of connection, the newsletter also dives into the whole concept of the Craic, which is, well, how do you even describe it? That's the thing. It's one of those things that's like way easier to experience than to explain. It's not just about having a good time, though that's definitely a huge part of it. It's more about that feeling of warmth and connection, you know, when you're sharing stories and laughter, maybe even a little friendly banter, all in good company, of course. It's about being present in the moment, savoring those simple joys that make life so rich. So it's that feeling of warmth and connection you get when you're surrounded by good company, good spirits. Exactly. Yeah. It's about embracing the moment and enjoying the people around you. It's the Irish way of life, welcoming, heartwarming, always up for a good laugh. You know, for a word that's basically about good times, it's surprisingly hard to explain, isn't it? It's like you just have to experience it to really get it right. Exactly. And what better way to experience the Craig than by digging into a classic Irish dish? You're thinking steak and Guinness pie, aren't you? It's like you read my mind. It's practically a requirement when we're talking Irish cuisine. Imagine this. Tender pieces of beef, slow cooked in this rich Guinness gravy, mushrooms and onions, all tucked inside a flaky pastry crust. Okay, now you're speaking my language. And can you picture it? That pie served up in a cozy pub, a storm raging outside. That's like the definition of cozy, right? Absolutely. And you know what I love about Irish pubs? They're more than just places to eat and drink. They're like community hubs. Places where stories are shared, friendships are made, and the music, that live music, it's like being transported to another world. Speaking of stories, remember that bit about the lost Bram Stoker story? The one about Dracula? Now that sounds like the perfect way to spend a stormy evening in Ireland, right? Oh yeah, a good literary mystery, always a favorite. And this one, it's really intriguing. So apparently there's this short story by Stoker called Gibbet Hill that was just recently found, like they unearthed it in the National Library of Ireland. Wait, a newly discovered tale from the creator of Dracula? Okay, what's it about? Give us all the spooky details. That's the thing. The details are still kind of under wraps. You know, the uh, manuscript is being examined by all these experts, and there's a ton of speculation about what secrets it might hold. But just imagine a story that's been lost for over a century, hidden in plain sight, and now, bam, it's rediscovered. It really makes you think about the power of literature. It's like finding buried treasure, right? You know, this whole deep dive is really showing me how much there still is to discover about Ireland. I thought I knew a thing or two, but this newsletter, it's full of surprises. And that's the beauty of these deep dives, you know? We're really just scratching the surface, but look at all these threads we've uncovered. Ancient monastic sites, lost stories. It's like Ireland's past is still very much present. It's like opening one treasure chest and inside there's a map to a whole hidden island. And speaking of uncovering the past, the newsletter goes into the history of Irish surnames. Like those O names. So cool. Oh yeah, they're more than just names. They're like direct links to Ireland's clan system. The newsletter specifically talks about the O'Hara clan. Did you see that? Ooh, yeah. Tell me more. I'm suddenly very invested in their history for some reason. Well, they're originally from County Sligo, where they were, get this, Lords of Luin, basically rulers of a powerful kingdom in Connacht. Lords of Luin. Okay, that has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Right. They were known for being fierce, politically savvy, and they were big patrons of the arts, apparently. They've even got their own castle, Parks Castle, beautiful example of 16th century architecture. So anyone out there with the O'Hara surname, you come from a long line of like movers and shakers. For sure. And that's just one clan. Think of all the stories hidden in other Irish surnames just waiting to be discovered. 
it really makes you realize how much history is woven into like the very fabric of a nation. It's like we're all walking around with these epic sagas tucked away in our family trees waiting to be told. You know what? I'm officially adding research my Irish ancestry to my to-do list. <laughs> this deep dive has been full of like these incredible aha moments. I love it. It really is amazing. You know, yeah. each time we do one of these deep dives, it's like it opens up like whole new paths to explore. You start with one thing and suddenly you're like down this rabbit hole of uh, fascinating facts and these unexpected connections, you know? It's like they say, right? The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And speaking of which, we have covered a lot of ground in this deep dive, haven't we? I mean, we've gone from stormy seas to cozy pubs to ancient castles and like hidden manuscripts. It's really amazing how one little newsletter led to all of this. It really is a testament to the power of curiosity, isn't it? Yeah. Like even a place that seems as familiar as Ireland can still be full of surprises. So true. So tell me, did this deep dive give you that Irish itch? Because I'll be honest, I'm already daydreaming about those rugged cliffs and, you know, the sound of traditional music drifting through the air. Absolutely. It really drives home the fact that Ireland is more than just like a pretty place to visit. It's a place with real soul. You know, it has a story woven into every single thing, every hill and valley, every song and legend. Well said. And who knows, maybe this deep dive will inspire some of our listeners to set off on their own Irish adventure, right? Whether it's through like genealogy research, maybe a deep dive into Bram Stoker and Dracula, or even a trip to experience the Creek firsthand. Now that's an invitation that's hard to resist. Isn't it though? Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the heart of Ireland. Until next time, may your journeys be full of, you know, fascinating discoveries and just a touch of magic.